So if you haven't watched that video above, the uh, uh, five reasons to choose your career in radiography, you, you need to watch that. I actually just rewatched it. I haven't seen it in probably since I made it three years ago. I posted that in 2019. And when I'm looking at it, um, it has over 19,000 views, 120 comments. Uh, it's it's actually, I forgot I covered all that stuff in there. It's very informative. I, I basically discussed the five, uh, the five reasons I got into it, which are still valid. Um, so I'm not going to rehash all that. Just watch that video. It's very informative, kind of a helicopter view of how the field works. Um, I chose the field because of demand, uh, the cost or ROI. You know, I looked at two year programs to see who would pay me the most when I graduated after two years. Um, I talked about opportunities to advance in the job because some jobs are dead ends. We've all been there. You you do one job and you're stuck in that same thing forever and it gets boring and repetitive. Um, number four was work-life balance. I'm going to talk a little bit about that because that's changed now thanks to COVID. And uh, ultimately, the pay, the pay was a big part of it, still is. There's still some great money to be made, but there's definitely some tips and tricks I can share with you on how to maximize the amount you've made. And, and again, at, at some point throughout this journey, I'm going to talk about how to how to make six figures because I learned how to make uh, over $100,000 way back, I'd say probably 2008, I think is when I started doing that. So um, so let me just highlight some things based on what I just watched in that five reasons to choose a career in radiography. First of all, the demand. There used to be, prior to COVID, uh, every so many years, this notion would pop up that there's not enough jobs. And that was somewhat accurate because uh, once radiography, it goes in the cycles of people being interested and, and moving on to other things and then back again. And so schools would pop up all of a sudden that you'd have, you know, when I was in the Phoenix Metro, you all of a sudden you had 10 schools teaching x-ray. And then when you're graduating that many students, you'd flood the job market. And then people graduating would have a hard time finding a job. But then it would self-correct because as less and less people were able to get jobs, less people would start going to the schools to learn how to do it. And so it would kind of self-correct. Plus, the government stepped in at one point and said, one of the metrics you schools have to show us is you have to prove that your students are going to be able to find a job when they graduate or you're not going to get federal funding. And so that carved out some of the schools that weren't being helpful in getting the, the students jobs. So the demand has actually increased substantially for a couple of reasons. Um, one, thanks to COVID and the lockdowns and all the garbage uh, that we went through with COVID, less people actually want to be in healthcare in general. Um, the hospitals didn't treat staff very well. It was more like, you know, you go home and we're not going to pay you because we don't have any money to pay because COVID has shut us down. Uh, or they made technologists burn their own PTO in order to get paid. Meanwhile, the hospital was collecting reimbursements for COVID and other shady things. So it, it, it turned out COVID was a great lesson in a lot of ways. But one thing it did do was uh, increase the demand for qualified and competent uh, imaging technologists in healthcare. There's definitely more of a demand now than ever. The other factor that is increasing demand for what we do is our largest generation still to date is the baby boomer generation. And they are of a certain age now where they are retiring. They're 60s and 70s and older, and they're starting to hit the healthcare systems for care now in mass. And since the largest generation is hitting the healthcare systems, there's not enough people in the hospitals to take care of this huge influx. I did a study for a hospital probably about seven years ago now, where we showed a 40% increase of patients were going to be hitting us in the next 10 years that were of this baby boomer population. You're going to get 40% more patients getting brain MRIs and, and all kinds of things, stroke and things due to aging. And we needed to start ramping up the number of employees across the board to handle this influx of patients. But instead, what the hospital administrators did, the MBAs that didn't have clinical background, uh, that were all about crunching numbers. So instead, what they did is start carving out less and less employees and making the current employees do more with less. And it led up to this huge crisis during COVID. So demand is even higher than it's ever been before for people in the imaging field. And then 
Third, I'll just quickly mention that every now and then you'll hear this silly discussion about AI taking over what we do, and there's not going to be any need for an x-ray tech because the computers are going to do it for you, which is ridiculous. That's like saying, uh, if I buy an Apple computer, it's going to do all my homework for me. No, you still have to get on and do your homework. It's just a vessel or a means to an end to getting it done. There's going to be advanced imaging machines, but somebody's got to run them. Uh, and that's the x-ray technologists. It's not going to be the doctors. The doctors are not trained in how to how to run our machines. That's what we do as technologists. We can't do what the doctors do, the radiologists, and they can't do what we do, which is capture diagnostic images using this fancy tech technological equipment. So AI is not going to take over our job. It's going to make our job different. Uh, it's going to it's going to change like, you know, back in the day, we had to set our own uh, techniques to acquire the best images. Now there's computations that are post-processing and changing our images. We're not having to do as much of that anymore. The machines are giving us better quality images based on algorithms, but you're still going to need a technologist to operate the equipment. So the demand is still there. Uh, number two on the cost, it's going up. There's nothing we can do about that. You can pretty much count on school education as a whole always goes up in costs. Um, number three was the opportunity to advance. That's still there. Everything I said is still accurate. Uh, you can cross train into a whole bunch of different modalities. Uh, if you want, uh, after you know 10 years or whatever, heck after one year, if you want to step outside of the clinical setting, you can be an app uh, specialist and train people how to use the applications. You can be a biomed engineer that fixes the equipment. You can be a salesperson for GE or Siemens or CareStream or one of the big companies and just sell x-ray equipment. Um, you can be an educator. There's there's just, there's an, I'll get into that in another section, but there are probably 30 plus jobs you can do once you step your foot into the world of radiology. Number four, and this is a biggie, the work-life balance has seen a big shift uh, since COVID. Um, now I'm 51 years old. And when I started 20 years ago, the big push was at least the people that I worked with was, work as many hours as you could, make as much money as you can, pay off any student loans or debt or whatever you have. And just, you know, while you're young, you work a bunch of hours, you get all that money and you 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 be smart with it. That shifted when COVID hit and people started to rethink their priorities and their work-life balance. And there's a big movement now of people that just want to do their job. They're, they're eight to five and that's it. And they go home. They don't want to be called after hours. They don't want to come in and help. Uh, and now that's that's a struggle. Uh, there's some people that say, well, I shouldn't be required to come back in. I worked my eight to five. Well, in healthcare, there's this thing that I talked about in the video called being on call. And there's a purpose administratively to having people on call. And there are some jobs that require you to be on call. So when you're looking at jobs, make sure you're paying attention to that in your job description. Does it require you to be on call? But there is this huge movement now of technologists and doctors, the radiologists are the same way. They wanna do their eight to five and don't call me afterwards and ask me any questions because I'm off the clock. It's family time, it's my time, don't bother me. I won't even answer the phone. And so that's a big change in the work-life balance. The, the employees are, are starting to understand their value more. Not that we didn't understand it 20 years ago, but we were more focused on the dollar back then, and COVID has certainly shifted that. We're more focused on work-life balance now and spending time with our families now. And I mean, I mean, I can tell you after being in it for a long time, what I learned is the more I worked, the more I got paid, the more taxes I paid, which made me rethink the whole, why, why did I kill myself and work all those extra hours just to pay an extra 30 grand in taxes? So these younger generations are smart and they're thinking about how many hours do I want to work? Is it worth my life to make that extra buck? And that's definitely a great conversation. And that's a big change. In, and companies now are even starting to pay attention to this work-life balance uh, and doing more to promote a healthy work-life balance. Last was the pay. It's still the same. I mean, not the same, but you can make even more now. Pay has gone up over time. The big thing I'll tell you that is kind of an insider secret on pay is if you stay put at one place and work for 20 years and take your annual raises, and don't get me wrong, there is a chance you don't get an annual raise. It's happened to me several times. No annual raises at all. If you stay 
put and you work 20 years, the amount of raises you get will not keep pace with the amount you can make if you move around to different locations. The reason is a hospital typically pays more for a person coming in to keep them at a national average and then that person that's slowly coming up, you know, that person that started 10 years ago, the national average was much, much lower. And all they're getting is a little 25 cent, 50 cent annual increase. And, and you're slowly climbing. I have seen it time and time again, where a new hire is just barely making less than somebody that's been there 10 years. Uh, so I used to be that loyal tech that said, I'm not going to jump around. I'm going to stay loyal to my company. And it did kind of pay off in some ways. The company that I stayed with for 10 years early on cross-trained me in several modalities, allowed me to do my clinical rotations on the job. I actually got paid to do some of my clinical rotations. I double-dipped with permission from my ultrasound school. So I, I, I felt it was a fair trade. Sorry, I got distracted by a phone call. Um, so what I was saying was, uh, what I've seen over the years is if you stay put to be loyal, you're going to be outpaced by new, new hires or... As I've watched people jump around, you know, every two to three years to a different hospital, they actually make more in the long run doing that. So if you plan to get into x-ray and stay in one place for your entire career, you'll need to understand that you're slowly going to fall behind the curve on what you get paid. Um, the way to beat that is to constantly upgrade your skill set by changing departments most people go from x-ray to CT or x-ray to MRI or to IR, or they pick up MAMO and, and go into mammography if you're a female. Uh, by changing modalities like that, you will incrementally increase your pay and make more per hour that way. And everything across the board goes up when you do that. Your on-call, your, your callbacks, all that stuff. On-call stays the same, but your callbacks go up because your base salary goes up. So just know that if you stay put, and you don't move around. And there are some people that are fine staying in x-ray for 30 years, then cool. Uh, if it's if you like it that much, do it, enjoy it. Just don't get too upset if your pay doesn't go up very fast if you do that. Um, so that's what I'll say. Let me bring my notes back up. That's what I'll round off with on the pay. Um, the other thing I'll make note of when you talk about opportunities for adv advancement, you know, I talked about mobile in that video. Uh, there are people that just drive around. In fact, I interviewed in a podcast, the mobile x-ray tech in Hollywood that drives around and do, does x-rays at the movie stars houses and whatnot. Um, travel radiology took off uh, during COVID and after COVID. Um, as hospitals were struggling to find the capital to pay for technologists, somehow they magically found the money to pay travelers. Uh, and if you're a member of the uh, nursing forums, like on Reddit, uh, huge flaming debates over why why is my hospital paying $200 an hour for a traveling nurse uh, when all I get is a $3 an hour annual raise, you know? Uh, but hospitals were bringing in travelers like crazy. Um, the, the demand has kind of started to die down, but there are still a lot of travel companies out there that would be happy to hire you and send you on a six month or a three month or nine month or even a 12 month contract. Uh, they're looking for any kind of technologist that's out there and they're paying really good. They pay for your hotel, they pay for your, your meals, they pay for your above average salaries. So uh, travel became very popular since COVID as well. So I'll 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 cap it off there. This this uh, this section was about why you uh, might be interested in a field um, of radiography, and so I, I I replayed the the three year old video, which is still very accurate to this day, and gave you kind of some updated thoughts on it. So we'll end this video here. Again, if you have questions, leave them in the comments section. You can leave them on the YouTube video, or you can shoot me one through. Uh, the radiologictechnologist.com blog. There's a contact me button at the top, uh, but let's move on to the next section.